Hello, everyone, and um, thanks, Brian. Um, I'm in beautiful, sunny Miami Beach while um, Brian is talking to you from Massachusetts where it's snowing like a banshee. So kind of nice to be here. And um, what I want to do today is um, fairly in-depth. Um, we're going to um, start out with a slideshow just of some of my work and um, then it'll take probably five or six minutes. And then uh, we're going to go through writing and action in Photoshop. Um, but it's going to be a rather sophisticated action utilizing some of On One tools. Um, and we're going to take that action and we're going to make that action into a droplet and then bring the droplet into Lightroom and Lightroom will then execute the droplet, um, placing images in specified folders. Um, the concept here is really that anything at all that um, you can do in Photoshop, um, we can take and sort of record all those steps, if you will. That's what an action is. And then play those out of um, Lightroom. So some people say to me, you know, give me an example of when you might want to do that. And a perfect example of, of this kind of thing is um, you're processing images for yourself. Maybe you're making TIFFs or something like that. And then you have a client that wants them in a specific way. Um, I always joke and call it the client wrong way. Um, and maybe that includes converting them to CMYK or something else. And rather than suffering through this in a um, one image at a time fashion, you can literally press a button, you know, go to Starbucks, come back, and everything is um, accomplished in, uh, in, its, in, in their own folders. So anyhow, um, that's the goal of today. And unlike some webinars, I'm doing this live. So if I make a mistake, um, you also get to see those mistakes. So hopefully um, that won't happen as well. Um, and then there'll be time for questions um, at the end. So I'm going to show you some images first. And Lightroom has to just um, prepare a few of these slides. Of course, it was supposed to have done that ahead of time. And it, and it um, there we go. So this is, um, these are all examples of some of my work from um, the last couple of years. I think it gives people a good idea of the kinds of things that I shoot. Um, most of it is um, stuff that occurs because I have a camera with me, and I'm really keen on taking a camera wherever I go. I'm very intrigued with color, design, shape, and format. Um, and although some of this does come from assignment, most of it really comes just simply from making sure that camera is, is part of my repertoire and with me all the time. And you'll recognize some, some um, you know, famous places as well, I'm sure. I would, I would comment on each picture, but I have it timed, so it's too fast to actually do that. And I guess the important part is just that you get a concept of some of this stuff. There's a series coming up from um, Antarctica. I've been there um, three times, going back a fourth time. Probably the only place I've ever been where it really uh, feels like you've um, left Earth and really, really an amazing, amazing uh, landscape. Uh, 23 and a half hours of sunlight, which is um, like a Kodachrome sunset that lasts forever. Um, pretty, pretty incredible. Uh, after Antarctica, uh, you'll also see some uh, images from Iceland from the uh, volcano that um, erupted, whose name I still will not pronounce because I won't do it correctly. Um, but these are all sort of, I mean, pretty good examples of, of I think, what I do on a, on a daily basis. And I know you guys have a little bit of a lag time for me, um, so I'll allow for that. But, um, a few pictures with uh, shot from an ultralight. Lightning is another favorite thing of mine. Hey, Coming Seth. Up. Yes. What, uh, what is your typical, since you're talking about the gear that you take around with you, can you 
can you chat about what kind of gear you usually have with you? Yeah, I um, um, I take what's needed, and when I when I actually go out on any given day, I um, I simply just grab um, whatever lens is nearby and take it. I used to you know walk around with everything, and whenever I did that, it always seemed that whatever lens I had on was the wrong lens. I spent most of my time changing lenses. Um, now I really, you know, I'll pick one lens and I sort of see that way. When I really go on assignment, um, typically um, I'm leaving actually for Africa and uh, on Sunday, and uh, I'll take something really, really long. Uh, you know, probably a 300 or 28 with a with a tele extender, and um, and then I'm going to take uh, uh, probably a 14, a 24 to 70. Uh, and a 70 to 28, um, and probably a macro. But when I go out, I typically pick a lens that I want to go out with and work with that lens. I'm not a big fan of carrying tons of gear anymore all the time, unless I have assistance carrying the gear. <laughs> so, Brian, if um, I'm not sure of the lag time here in terms of if the slideshow is, is done. It's done on my end. Yep, it's good a, here. Okay, um, and that last picture, by the way, was um, uh, because I really do shoot every all the time, and people, uh, uh, I, I think one thing that that's important is I really do carry a camera every day. This was um, last week during the eclipse. Um, I just simply went up to my roof, opened a bottle of wine, and um, had a blast uh, uh, shooting this eclipse. I did not realize that it was going to take as long as it did, but it was pretty impressive when the moon shifted to this um, these red tones and pretty wild. So I guess we're sort of ready to start with the technical part. And um, uh, I'm going to talk through this slowly so everybody can follow along. But uh, I'm actually in Lightroom, and I'm going to go to a folder that I made up, uh, actually a collection that I made up for this on one demo. And um, we're going to go to, uh, I'll just pick, oh, I might as well work with this image since that's the image that you guys are using to um, promote this. Um, for anyone who's interested, uh, you know, this is not done with an underwater housing. This is um, called um, making a picture. So you go in the water with the camera and you, and you hope that it doesn't get wet. Um, or if it does get wet, you dry it off. Um, I have an underwater housing as well, but a lot of times it's just more fun to walk in and hope it all works out okay. So. A couple of um, ground rules, if you will, for people who have written actions, and I know a lot of people write actions, but what I'm, uh, what I'm about to show you um, is actually kind of funny because Thomas Knowles, the gentleman who uh, created Photoshop and worked a lot on Lightroom as well, um, actually told me when I first did this that um, it wouldn't work. So uh, kind of neat to, to teach Thomas a lesson or two every now and then. Um, the real key to making an action and have it batch process out of Lightroom is that you have to start with an, uh, with an open image. Um, many times we write actions, let me switch to the library mode, many times we um, write actions and we actually record the open command, um, put the uh, image someplace, and doing it that way will result in an action that's recorded but it will only um, work on one image or on a, uh, a few images. It won't, um, it won't play in batch mode. And a few other things that I just want to show you um, ahead of time before I, I start with all this is that whenever I write an action, I always designate a, um, a destination of where that action is going to uh, place an image. And that solves a, a lot of problems, which you're going to see as I start doing this. So I just want to show you my desktop for a minute. And today I've uh, set up um, two little folders. One is um, called on one, and that is where some of these images are going to um, process to. And then there is a second folder. I call it like the D65 lab. Um, we have a company called D65, and that's where that name comes from, and we teach uh, digital workflow. And in that lab, I have created several um, folders uh, for essentially what um, what these actions are going to do. So today, if I open this up, um, I have one called Holga Infrared and Holga Resize. 
And um, again, that's the destination where these images are going to end up. So without further ado, I'm going to um, start. I'll take my time going through this so that um, everybody can get this. And if you don't quite understand this, that's also OK, because this really is sort of taking it up to um, the upper levels of the atmosphere, if you will. So I'm going to just start out by taking this image, and I'm just going to export this to my desktop. Actually, I'm going to export it to that on one folder. And um, again, one thing I want to say is that I always work with um, raw files. And I would be happy to do this with raw files. But with that kind of bandwidth, um, most of you would be having a severe lag time. So for sake of demonstration purposes, uh, today I'm going to work with JPEGs. Um, um, forgive me. <laughs> Uh, I never work with JPEGs, but we are, we're going to use JPEGs today to make this um, a little more efficient. And that's the uh, reason for the JPEGs. And in fact, we're going to even do it in sRGB, which, uh, by the way, stands for Satanic RGB. So uh, I'm going to press the Export button. I've set the dialog box up so that it's going to go into a subfolder on my desktop called On1. We're going to make uh, JPEGs at um, uh, quality 90, give or take, in the sRGB color space. And I'm constraining this image so that it, it is going to be 1,000 pixels at a resolution of 72 PPI. So here goes the export. And I'm going to move my legroom out of the way so you guys can watch. And that image has ended up, hopefully, right here. So I'm going to open that image up now. And I'm opening it up in Photoshop. And now we are sort of ready to begin. Um, and again, critical that if you're going to attempt to do something like this, that you start out with the image uh, already opened up. So I'm going to do several actions today. I'm going to do a uh, basic one first, and, and even the basic one's kind of advanced. And then we're going to really um, bump it up a, a level. Um, so. We cannot save actions in Photoshop. It's something that we've asked for for years. Uh, we can only save a set of actions. So the first thing that um, I actually need to do is to create a set. So I'm going to go to the Actions panel over here. And I'm going to go to the little drop-down menu. And I'm going to create a set. And again, the idea here is that uh, once I have a set, I can then create an action in that set. And then I can actually save, accomplish saving that action. So I'm going to choose New Set. I'm going to give the set a name. We'll call this Lightroom Actions. I choose OK. And we see the set created um, in the Actions panel. Now I'm going to um, create an action in that set. So with the set highlighted. I again go to the drop down menu, and I'm going to select new action. And um, I always tell people make sure you give an, your action a name that means something because calling it action one or action two is going to do you no good trying to um, figure out what it does later on. So I'm going to call this first one Holga in infrared. infrared. And I'm going to choose Record. I always laugh about Record in um, the Actions palette because um, uh, the red light means go, and the green light means stop. Uh, yes, that's correct. Red means go, and green means stop. The uh, background on that, for anyone interested, comes from uh, the engineering concept that in a sound studio, it is the red light that comes on even though to photographers, red typically means stop. So my action is recording. I'm going to call up some on one software. And important to know, if, again, if you try this, that to do an action and to have the action recorded, you, can't, you cannot call the uh, action up from sort of the dialog box for on one. Instead, the, it has to be called up through the uh, Automate menu. So I'm going to go to Photoshop's main menu, go to File, I'm going to drop down to Automate. And I'm going to select, yes, I am. I'm going to select um, Photo Tools, Professional Edition 2.6. And we're going to open that up. 
and as this opens up, you'll you will see that the uh, dialog box for the actions panel, and I pull that away, will actually let's see if we can see it. Uh, yeah, you'll notice that it has actually um, uh, called up that dialog box. So let me bring this back up here. And uh, I am going to use the look for this one of an on one preset. And it's called Holga Infrared. There we go. And you'll get an idea of what that looks like. Kind of a neat little look. Makes this sort of editorial image worthwhile for advertising. So I'm going to hit apply down here in the uh, dialog box to uh, actually uh, make that happen, if you will. And I hit apply. And you'll notice now in the um, dialog box here for the action that we actually have that um, being recorded. Um, and that, that's the key. I mean, if you're, if you're writing an action and you want to know if it's working correctly, you always check that dialog box and every step of the way should show um, exactly what's being recorded. Again, exactly like having a microphone on for Photoshop. So now that the image has this look on it, um, for this first action, I'm just going to um, flatten it. And I choose Layer Flatten Image. And you'll see that was recorded. And then I'm going to choose File, Save As. And I'm going to save as to a very specific location. That location that I'm going to save as is um, going to be on my desktop in the um, D65 lab folder. And I'm going to save that into this preset folder that I set up called Holga Infrared. And we're going to um, uh, save this with the embedded color profile of Satanic RGB. I choose Save. I will uh, will do this one at a uh, JPEG. Uh, let's do it at level 10, actually. I choose OK. And again, you'll see that that is showing up in the dialog box. And then I'm going to close the image. And now I'm going to stop the action by pressing the green light. And um, now what we can do is take that action, if you will, and we can convert that into a droplet. And then we can play that out of Lightroom. But wait, there's more. And before I actually show you how that works, um, now that we've done one action, uh, I'd like to actually step this up and do a slightly more complicated action. Um, and then uh, convert it into a droplet and play it out of, um, uh, out of Lightroom. So this time, I'm going to do something very similar. Uh, in fact, the front part of it will be the same. Um, but then I'm going to go into um, uh, perfect resize, or what used to be known as genuine, genuine fractals, and actually call up that second piece of software and up res the image. So again, conceptually, why might I do this? Um, maybe I'm making a absolutely huge print, and my um, original image uh, I can't, and I like to output at least at 180 PPI in Lightroom. But if I can achieve uh, the native size that I want at 180, I would in fact upres it first to to accomplish that size. So again, con conceptually. Um, it's the idea that um, we are again going to um, do something in Photoshop, and then uh, the neat part is we can apply that to a whole group of images. So without further ado, uh, I am going to um, first start again with my image in the open position. So let me open this image up. And I am going to uh, uh, create a new action. And this time I'm going to create, we already have the set, so I'm going to create a new action in our Lightroom Actions set. So uh, I highlight Lightroom Actions. That's the set. And I'm going to drop down from the uh, uh, Actions menu. And I'm going to choose New Action. And I'm going to call this Holga Infrared. 
Red uh, and up res. And again, I choose record. And again, uh, for your reference, I know that we are recording because the red light is on. Uh, so now I'm going to go to Photoshop's main menu. I'm going to drop down to the automate menu. I'm going to fly out to photo tools and I'm going to open photo tools. And let's just make this a little bigger here so everyone can see. I'm going to open up my on one presets and pick my hold the infrared. and then choose apply. So that's sort of step one. Now, um, let, again, this is a JPEG, but let's just assume that I really want to make this um, um, large or maybe even uh, one and a half times the size that it currently is or larger than that. So what's neat now is that I'm going to go back. And again, this is it's pretty complicated and pretty neat to be able to do this. I've recorded the opening of Photo Tools. Now, let's really take it up a notch. And I'm going to record the opening um, of a Perfect Resize. So open up Perfect Resize. And um, what we're going to do is... Uh, this is our original size here. Actually, again, let's make this a little bigger for everybody. And I'm going to uh, up-res this. So I'm going to actually just go to pixels here. And let's just go to 1,500 as an example. And again, I, um, I could go through all these dialog boxes and uh, actually make a bunch of other changes. But conceptually here, and that's what's important, it's the idea of um, uh, taking anything that we can do in Photoshop, um, even multiple steps and even third-party software, and, um, and, and open them, record those, and then take those back into um, Lightroom. So I hit Apply, and we have now uh, executed, you'll see uh, in the dialog box, we've actually executed uh, photo tools. We've executed perfect resize. Um, I'm actually pretty amazed at the way perfect resize works because uh, uh, the quality is pretty pretty impressive, um, even on this JPEG. Um, and uh, for God forbid I ever actually just use JPEGs, but um, even on the JPEG, it held up pretty well. And in fact, if we um, were to zoom in, and I don't want to play with my action, you'd see that there uh, that there was. Uh, although Photoshop is destructive, there was um, a fairly uh, little compromise in being able to do this, and yet uh, we've been able to achieve the ability of up uh, the file um, more than 50% of its size, which is um, pretty cool. So I uh, have both of those done the way I want. I'm now going to um, go to my image. I'm going to flatten it, so layer, flatten image. And again, important here that I could keep on going in Photoshop and um, other third-party software. So I'm going to now choose File, Save As, and I'm going to save as this time. I'm going to save as to my desktop, to the D65 lab, and again, um, you know, if you don't have a destination uh, predetermined, then that destination, um, then you're determining it as part of the action. And, and uh, I just find it much easier to always have what I call like my D65 lab on my desktop. That's where all of my actions are going to go. And I'm going to save this one in the Holga resize box. We'll choose save. We'll uh, make this. Uh, we'll make this as the best possible JPEG. As JPEGs go, we'll do this at level 12. Choose OK. We've recorded all these, and in fact, if we open this, these drop-down menus up, you'll, you can actually see all. There's all the steps of uh, of 
photo tools here and here's what's gone on in perfect resize and now we're down to the save as so um, I'm now going to close the image and I'm going to stop the recording by pressing the go light or the green light okay let me just close these so it makes a little more sense to everybody so you'll see that we now have um, our actions, we have our set, and we have our two actions. And I can actually, if I wanted to, I can save the uh, entire set from uh, the drop-down menu. But um, um, we've already done that. Whoops. That's uh, my mistake there. So what I'm going to do now is actually convert this action um, into a droplet. And again, uh, actions themselves can't play out of Photoshop, but a droplet can play out of Photoshop. So I'm going to highlight, um, I'm going to highlight the action. I'm going to go to Photoshop's main menu, drop down again to the automate menu, and this time I'm going to choose uh, create droplet. So I go to the menu, I drop down to automate, and I fly out and drop down to create droplet. Highlight create droplet. And this is probably the only part that's, well, I shouldn't say the only part that's tricky for someone who's never done this. This probably looks like a foreign language altogether. But the, the destination for where an action goes, um, or where a droplet goes, I should say, in Lightroom, um, is the uh, user on a Mac side, anyways. It is the user library, application support, Adobe, Lightroom and then the um, actions panel. So I'm going to I'll actually show you that path. Nice thing about uh, about this is that from Lightroom's main menu uh, and preferences, you can actually go right to this uh, path with one button. But I'm going to take you here manually, and you'll see that the path is going to be the user user library, my old eyes, you will go to the user library, user library, application support, Adobe, Lightroom, it's scary that you memorize this stuff over the years. And then we're going to go to export actions. So let me just make this bigger for those of you that want to stare at that um, at that path. And then we have to give it uh, a name. So um, we're going to do save as up here. And I'll just call this Holga Upres and choose save. And you'll see that uh, over here we have that path. So then I have to choose what, what it is that I want to play. So I'm going to play the actions from Lightroom's actions. And I have a choice now of Holga Infrared or Holga Infrared and Upres. And I'm going to choose the whole Holga Infrared and Upres. I am, over, I am not going to check override action open commands. And I am uh, not going to check subfolders. I am going to suppress any file open options dialog, meaning in English, because I'm going to open up multiple files. I do not want Photoshop to give me a menu that says, do you want to do this? And typically, my um, color space is ProPhoto uh, RGB. And in this case, we're going to be opening up images in sRGB. Um, so uh, in, in most cases, I would have a color mismatch. And what I'm able to do is suppress those color uh, profile warnings. So I choose OK. And now we get to see the real magic, which is really cool. So I'm going to just close this for a minute. We're going to go back to Lightroom. And what I'm going to do here is just go to my grid view in the library. And I'm going to pick uh, a few images here. So uh, these are all kiteboarding in my backyard. So I think I'll pick this one 
and I'll pick this one, and maybe, well, why not? We'll do that one as well, and uh, and that one. And again, I could do this with 100 images. I could do this with 1,000 images. Uh, for sake of time in this demo, uh, I think we'll leave it like that. And what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm in the library. I'm going to go down to the lower left-hand side, and I'm going to go to Export. I'm going to click on Export, and I'm going to export these images to uh, that on one folder, which is all we already have selected. Now I'm going to do something pretty neat. Under Post Processing, at the bottom here, uh, I will now have available those, um, those um, actions that were converted into droplets. So you'll see right here I have Olga Upres. Now, before I execute this and show you how it works, um, one little notation, and, and uh, I like to call it bug feature, and, and bug features are things that some of us think are bugs and the engineers actually think are features. Um, the dialog box here is sticky, so the warning that I give to you, and I mean this in all seriousness, is that if you do this and you go ahead and you do an export and you're going to see what happens, um, after you are done with this, you always want to go back and set this dialog box back to do nothing. Otherwise, you're going to find that the next time you go into Photoshop and export, um, after you're done exporting, the action's going to open up and uh, you're going to wonder what's going on because all this other stuff is going to happen in the background. So let's check this out, see if I did this correctly or if I messed up, but I have confidence today. So I'm going to hit export and I'm going to move Lightroom out of the way. You're going to see up here at the top it says exporting four files. Let's just pull this down. So what's going to happen is four files are going to go into the on one uh, box. There's four. And then without my hands on Photoshop, you're going to see Photoshop open up and um, the uh, dialog, there, there goes my uh, infrared holder and, and then the files are going to get up -rezzed. And for all of you who have done actions before, what's also kind of neat, is that this actually plays faster than um, actions directly out of Photoshop, which is kind of neat. So uh, we'll let that finish up. And I believe that we chose four. Those are the four. So if what I have told you is correct, I can come into this folder now. And here are our regular images that we uh, exported. And what's neat is then I close this and I now go to my D65 lab and I'm going to open up my Holga resize and lo and behold and let's just make these a little larger so I open up the same one here and what we have here are those images that have been up and converted and um, that is pretty cool and again the the scenario here and the idea is especially if you have multiple goals to achieve. Uh, for me, I prepare images for a stock agency, but I also want to prepare them for myself. I also like to prepare them at the same time for the copyright office because uh, I register everything I shoot. And um, you know, I might have three, four, five things to accomplish. And most photographers actually go through an export and they go through this process sort of one at a time in a beleaguering manner, uh, image per image. And the real goal here is being able to um, take uh, 100 images or even 500 images, press a button, and accomplish um, multiple things. Uh, we have a book out on Lightroom that's available on Amazon. And um, that entire book, all of the uh, CMYKs were accomplished in um, this exact fashion, actually taking TIFF files and then doing the CMYK conversions. Um, so pretty neat to be able to, um, to accomplish something like this. And um, um, that's, I had hoped to get this done in 40 minutes, and it looks like it's about 40 minutes, and I want to make sure we have time for um, questions and whatnot. So uh, Brian, do you have um, a list of questions, or is everybody totally blown away? Everyone's definitely blown away, and we have some questions. I'm just going through them right okay. now. Do you um, do you know by any chance? I know that we're we're heavy on Lightroom. We do love Lightroom, but 
the uh, the workflow, and I don't know if um, I was trying to do some research as to whether we can send images from Aperture um, through um, oh, like from Aperture through to the actions. Um, and I don't know if that's something that you've ever. Dealt I, I with. haven't. I I haven't played with that. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure if the uh, if the dialog box. Um, um, Allows that um, you, you could certainly. I mean, you could certainly export an image from Aperture and write an action. Um, I don't. I don't know if you can take that action and bring it back into into Aperture. Yep, absolutely. Um, no, I mean, the, for the most part, um, everyone is just really excited in terms of seeing how you could automate using uh, the On One applications. So you don't even have to go into it, um, especially multiple ones. So okay, and I, I I do want to point out again for people that try this, um, you know, absolutely must is that you have to start with an image in the open position, which again many times when we write actions we actually record the open command. It will not play back in batch mode if you try to record that open command. So make sure the image is open when you start. And then sort of knock your socks off because it's really quite cool to be able to do just about anything. And then um, uh, the second tip would be it is highly useful to set up something where all these actions go, something like a D65 lab. Gotcha. Um, two more. Uh, first, can you go over again where you saved your actions for Lightroom? Like for uh -huh. them to... That wonderful path. Um, yeah. yeah, and uh, the path. Um, Actually, I'm going to show you, and I'm going to show you the easy way to get there. The easiest way to get there is that from Lightroom's main menu, from Preferences, um, there's a, uh, if you go to the Presets panel in Preferences, there's a wonderful little panel out here called Show Lightroom Presets Folder. So rather than have to navigate that um, crazy path, all you really need to do go to this menu, go to Show Lightroom's Presets folder, and voila, it will open up that folder. That path happens to be, um, on a Mac anyways, User Library, Application Support, Adobe, Lightroom, Presets, and in this case, it's the Export Actions Preset um, box. So it would be safe to say then for uh, Windows users on PCs, they can go into Lightroom into their uh, preferences yes, as well. Yes, I mean the, the dialog box is here and will take you to the exact path. I just don't know that path by heart. Right, and so for the Windows users out there, just go to your, um, in Lightroom, go to your preferences dialog box and select the presets uh, tab. And you should have, uh, Adobe does a nice job of kind of making their apps as unisex as possible for both uh, operating systems. So showing the Lightroom presets folder should uh, pop up with your respective path. And it does. Yep. Um, okay, so the last question is a lot of people were asking if you can uh, bring up the name of your book and where they can get it again. Um, the, um, uh, let me just grab a copy of our book. It's um, on Amazon. And um, what I'll actually do here is I'm going to go to uh, our website because you can get it directly through the website. And let me just open that up so everybody can actually see here. Move that over here. The book is called D65's Lightroom 3 Workbook. Our website is d65.com. And you can order it um, either through the website um, in our store, or you can um, get it on Amazon. And on Amazon, if you, if you uh, actually do a search for Lightroom 3 books, you'll see that it comes up right near the top. Awesome. Okay, what I'm, I'm going to take over for a second, Seth. Um, okay. Um, so thank you so much. For All right, and um, I enjoy doing this, everybody, and I hope you learned something, and um, I will be doing this in the future on a regular basis.